Hi, this is Dakota and my name is Clint. We're here today to talk to you about coolant, color choices, and product recommendations. Do I need to use the same color coolant that came in my vehicle? So that's a really great question and I'll start by saying that coolant color is really cosmetic so it's always unadvisable to use the coolant color solely to make a decision on anything related to coolant. Um, so it's more important than to think about coolant color is to really find out what type of coolant. This could be your um, conventional or organic additive technology also known as oat or hybrid and then within that kind of family of products that's where you want to stay within okay. the engine. So if it came with an oat you want to stick with an oat. So if you've got a conventional it's, it's more important to match a conventional to a conventional or an oat to an oat than it is to say match red to red or an orange to an orange. Yes absolutely. How do I know what type of coolant came in my vehicle from the factory? So this information is normally available in the owner's manual um, and some OEMs will put stickers on the radiators or the fill tanks which will tell you what product it was first filled with. Um, and most OEMs will allow for not only the products that's selected for first fill but also alternative products that meet the same requirements of that one. Um, so a lot of times you can find in the owner's manual a list of first fill products or an alternative performance standard for different choices. So that's what's recommended by the OEM. So let's say that I've lost my owner's manual. Mm -hmm. What do you do then? Um, so the safest option would be to look at using an all makes, all models product. Mm -hmm. This would be ES Complete Oat. Um, so it's really formulated for those applications among other things to where if you don't know that product is compatible with large engines, small engines, um, a variety of OEMs and makes and models. So you'd really want to go with something like that. You would want to drain and replace um, if you truly don't know what product was being used. Okay. Why are there so many different types of coolants? So this is really driven by different OEM requirements and needs um, and that comes from the different um, tiers of engines and the different metals that are used. A good example of this would be, um, so a lot of European OEMs require a silicated oat and they do so because they use a lot of aluminum in the newer engines and silicate protects aluminum well. Okay. So things such as that will drive different OEM preferences. You also have different regional biases. These can, can be impacted by things such as like the reach regulation in Europe for example. Um, so there's a different variety of OEM preferences. Nitrite, nitrite free, phosphate, phosphate free and that really requires that coolant manufacturers need to provide a diverse portfolio to meet all the customer's needs. Why are there so many so many variations of oat? So oat coolants do come in variations such as nitrated oat and phosphated oats and silicated oats. Um, and this again goes back to OEM requirements and preferences. Um, in general if you're looking for one oat coolant that can be used in really any of those applications it would go back to like ES Complete Oat mm -hmm. um, where it is that compatible product but it's driven by the OEMs predominantly. Okay. What is recycled coolant and what is the best application? So recycled coolants are specifically referring to the ethylene glycol content. So coolant recyclers will go out and they'll reclaim ethylene glycol based coolants from different customers. And when they do that, they'll take it back to a facility um, and they'll purify it. Now the purification process is really where you can go a few different directions. You can create a very good quality, clean product, mm -hmm. or more often you end up with a coolant that's been filtered and then re-additized. So unfortunately this filtration process where it's just filtered, re-additized, doesn't remove some of the things that can really cause a lot of harm to the engine. For this reason, OEMs don't recommend recycled coolants and we also as Cummins Filtration don't recommend the use of recycled coolants. If you do have a product that is recycled the correct way, it can be very energy intensive with some advanced technologies and a lot of times that product will actually be more expensive than the same product with a virgin glycol. So why would I want to use recycled coolants? There are some markets in which the customers are driven by government subsidiaries or they really have a focus on renewability and using requirements even for using recycled products. So for those applications, that's where you really want to focus on getting the high quality, truly good 
recycled products. Um, and outside of that, it's just really a dangerous or risky chance. Okay. Question number six, it says, what is the benefit of changing to oak coolant from SCA based products? So changing to an oak coolant really is a benefit for the customer more than anyone. So oak coolants are designed to be truly user friendly in that all of the maintenance has really been taken off of the customer and put on the coolant manufacturer. So ES Complete Oat does not have to have SCAs or extenders added. Um, it doesn't have to be changed until engine rebuild. So it's very, very little maintenance. In addition to the lower maintenance and the lower labor requirements and the lower time associated with that, oak coolants are also more tolerant of contamination and neglect. So whereas um, in older coolants, you might hear about silicate gelation, for example, oak coolants are not prone to that. They don't contain silicate, so they don't have dropout. Um, also things like hard water, they can tolerate a much higher concentration than an older conventional technology could. Oh, this is a great question. Question number seven, it says, are modern day coolants compatible with legacy engines? So not all of them. Um, so legacy engines often use a different type of elastomer material and head gaskets in particular or hoses. And some oak coolants on the market could cause irreversible damage to this elastomer component. So the good news is that within the Cummins filtration product line, all of the coolants are backwards compatible, so they can be used in new engines or legacy engines. Um, and ES Complete Oat is really designed with that in mind to ensure that it's compatible with all makes and all models um, throughout the market. So the ES Complete Oat is really sort of a one size fits all type of coolant. It is, um, and there's a lot of good benefits with it because you know you can use it in huge high horsepower equipment mm -hmm. all the way down to passenger cars and very small engines. Mm -hmm. um, so it's designed to perform in different duty cycles, different engine sizes. So all markets, all applications. Yeah. Okay, yes, covers exactly. it. Exactly, it does. How can I change from my current coolant to a different product? So there are a few different ways to do this. Um, we have some guidelines on our website that really talk about how to change from current chemistry to ES Complete Oat or from like a nitrated oat to an ES Complete Oat. Mm -hmm. um, and it has guidelines on how to check the quality and the condition of the coolant to ensure that you're able to really make that transition without draining. For other applications in which you're going from say a conventional product to an oat coolant where there's a pretty big difference in chemistry, we would recommend a drain and replace for that. But I would start with checking on the website, um, looking at our conversion guidelines and seeing if it's something that really would fit your particular application. Mm -hmm. And then if not, look at a drain and replace. Okay. And the last question we got, question number nine. It says, how can a fleet with a variety of applications, whether it's on highway, heavy, medium, or light, off highway, various models, consolidate coolants to a single coolant that is cost effective not only for purchases but in maintenance costs. You know it really goes back to ES Complete Oat. Mm -hmm. When we formulated it that really was one of the primary functions. We wanted this to be leading technology, customer friendly, and truly one size fits all product. Um, and I think we've achieved that very well and that would be the recommendation um, for any fleet to be able to go to one product. Okay. All right, so that's the last question, but let's say I've got more questions about coolants in general. Mm -hmm. Where would I go to find that information? Um, so I would start with the Cummins Filtration website. Mm -hmm. In the Coolants and Chemical Products section, you can go there, click on any product and find literature there or facts there. We also have Fleet School. Fleet School, you can self-register for that, go through it at your own pace. Um, a lot of great information there. And go to the Cummins Filtration channel here on YouTube and that can also show you a lot of information through other videos similar to this one. All right, well Dakota, we appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you. And you guys take care.